End Times Prophecies of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich March 22, 1820 I saw very clearly the errors, the aberrations, and the countless sin sins of men. I saw the folly and the wickedness of their actions, against all truth and all reason. Priests were among them, and I gladly endured my sufferings so that they may return to a better mind. April 12, 1820 I had another vision of the Great Tribulation. It seems to me that a concession was demanded from the clergy which could not be granted. I saw many older priests, especially one who wept bitterly. A few younger ones were also weeping, but others, and the lukewarm among them, readily did what was demanded. It was as if people were splitting into two camps. May 13, 1820 I saw how harmful would be the consequences of this false church. I saw it increase in size. Heretics of every kind came into the city of Rome. The local clergy grew lukewarm, and I saw a great darkness. Then the vision seemed to extend on every side. Whole Catholic communities were being oppressed, harassed, confined, and deprived of their freedom. I saw many churches closed down, great miseries everywhere, wars and bloodshed. A wild and ignorant mob took violent action, but it did not last long. Once more I saw that the Church of Peter was undermined by a plan evolved from the secret sect of Freemasons, while storms were damaging it. But I also saw that help was coming when distress had reached its peak. I saw again the Blessed Virgin ascend on the church and spread her mantle over it. July 1820 I saw the Holy Father surrounded by traitors and in great distress about the church. He had visions and apparitions in his hour of greatest need. I saw many good, pious bishops, but they were weak and wavering. Their cowardice often got the upper hand. Then I saw darkness spreading around and people no longer seeking the true church. August to October of 1820 I see more martyrs, not now but in the future. I saw the secret sect relentlessly undermining the great church. Near them I saw a horrible beast coming up from the sea. All over the world good and devout people, especially the clergy, were harassed, oppressed, and put into prison. I had the feeling that they would become martyrs one day. When the church had been for the most part destroyed by the secret sect, and when only the sanctuary and altar were still standing, I saw the wreckers enter the church with the beast. There they met a woman of noble carriage who seemed to be with child because she walked slowly. At this sight the enemies were terrorized, and the beast could not take but another step forward. It projected its neck toward the woman as if to devour her, but the woman turned about and bowed down toward the altar, her head touching the ground. Thereupon I saw the beast taking to flight towards the sea again, and the enemies were fleeing in the greatest confusion. Then I saw in the great distance great legion approaching. In the foreground I saw a man on a white horse. Prisoners were set free and joined them. All enemies were pursued. Then I saw that the church was being promptly rebuilt, and she was more magnificent than ever before. August 10, 1820 I see the Holy Father in great anguish. He lives in a palace other than before, and he admits only a limited number of friends near him. I fear that the Holy Father will suffer many more trials before he dies. I see that the false church of darkness is making progress, and I see the dreadful influence it has on the people. The Holy Father and the church are verily in so great a distress that one must implore God day and night. I have been told to pray much for the church and the Pope. The people must pray earnestly for the extirpation of the dark church. Last night I was taken to Rome where the Holy Father, immersed in his sorrow, is still hiding to elude dangerous demands made upon him. He is still very weak and exhausted by sorrows, cares, and prayers. He can now trust but few people. That is mainly why he is hiding. But he still has with him an aged priest who has much simplicity and godliness. He is his friend, and because of his simplicity they did not think it would be worth removing him. But this man receives many graces from God. He sees and notices a great many things which he faithfully reports to the Holy Father. It was required of me to inform him, while he was praying of, of the traitors and the evil doers who were to be found among the high-ranking servants living close to him so that he might be made aware of it. August 25, 1820 I do not know in what manner I was taken to Rome last night, but I found myself near the church of St. Mary Major, and I saw many poor people who were greatly distressed and worried, because the Pope was to be seen nowhere, and also on account of the restlessness and the alarming rumors in the city. 
These people did not seem to expect the church doors to open. They only wanted to pray outside. An inner urging had left them there individually. But I was in the church and I opened the doors. They came in surprised and frightened because the doors had opened. It seems to me that I was behind the door and they could not see me. There was no office on it in the church, but only the sanctuary lamps were lit. The people prayed quite peacefully. Then I saw an apparition of the Mother of God, and she said that the tribulation would be very great. She added that people must pray fervently with outstretched arms, be it only long enough to say three Our Fathers. This was the way her son prayed for them on the cross. They must rise at twelve at night and pray in this manner, and they must keep coming to the church. They must pray above all for the church of darkness to leave Rome. She, the Holy Mother, said a great many other things that it pains me to relate. She said that if only one priest could offer the bloodless sacrifice, as worthily and with the same disposition as the apostles, he could advert all the disasters that are to come. To my knowledge, the people in the church did not see the apparition, but they must have been stirred by something supernatural, because as soon as the Holy Virgin had said that, they must pray to God with outstretched arms, they all raised their arms. These were all good and devout people, and they did not know where help and guidance should be sought. There were no traitors and enemies among, among them, yet they were afraid of one another. Once can judge thereby what the situation was like. September 10, 1820 I saw the church of St. Peter. It has been destroyed but for the sanctuary and the main altar. St. Michael came down into the church, clad in his suit of armor, and he paused, threatening with his sword and a number of unworthy pastors who wanted to enter. That part of the church which had been destroyed was promptly fenced in with light timber so that the divine office might be celebrated as it should. Then from all over the world came priests and laymen, and they rebuilt the stone walls since the wreckers had been unable to move the heavy foundation stones. And then I saw the church which was being promptly rebuilt, and she was more magnificent than ever before. September 12, 1820 I saw a strange church being built against every rule. No angels were supervising the building operations. In that church, nothing came from high above. There was only division and chaos. It is probably a church of human creation, following the latest fashion as well as the new heterodox church of Rome, one world church of the false prophet, in brackets, which seems of the same kind. I saw again the strange big church that was being built there in Rome. There was nothing holy in it. I saw this just as I saw a movement led by ecclesiastics to which contributed angels, saints, and other Christians. But there in the strange big church, all the work was being done mechanically. Everything was being done according to human reason. I saw all sorts of people, things, doctrines, and opinions. There was something proud, presumptuous, and violent about it, and they seemed to be very successful. I did not see a single angel, nor a single saint helping in the work. But far away in the background I saw the seat of a cruel people armed with spears, and I saw a laughing figure which said, Do build it as solid as you can, we will pull it to the ground. I saw that many of the instruments in the new church, such as spears and darts, were meant to be used against the living church. Everyone dragged in something different, clubs, rods, pumps, puppets, mirrors, trumpets, horns, bellows, or so all sorts of things. In the cave below, the sacristy, some people needed bread, but nothing came of it. It would not rise. The men in the little mantles brought wood to the steps of the pulpit to make a fire. They puffed and blew hard and labored hard, but the fire would not burn. All they produced was smoke and fumes. Then they brought a hole in the roof and ran up a pipe, but the smoke would not rise, and the whole place became black and suffocating. Some blew the horns so violently that tears streamed from their eyes. All in this church belonged to the earth returned to the earth. All was dead. The work of human skill, a church of the latest style, a church of man's invention, like the new heterodox church in Rome. September 27, 1820. I saw deplorable things. They were gambling, drinking, and talking in church. They were also courting women. All sorts of abominations were per perpetuated there. Priests allowed everything and said mass with much irreverence. I saw that few of them were still godly and only a few had sound views on things. I also saw Jews standing under the porch of the church. All these things caused me much distress. In brackets, the Jews who will accept the Antichrist, John 5.43 October 1st, 1820 
The church is in great danger. We must pray so that the Pope may not leave Rome. Countless evils would result if he did. In those days, faith will fall very low. It will be pers preserved in some places only. The little black man in Rome, whom I see so often, has many working for him without their clearly knowing for what end. He has his agents in the new black church also. If the Pope leaves Rome, the enemies of the church will get the upper hand. I see the little black man in his own country committing many thefts and falsifying things generally. Religion is there so skillfully undermined and stifled that there are scarcely one hundred faithful priests. I cannot say how it is, but I see fog and darkness increasing. All must be rebuilt soon. For everyone, even ecclesiastics, are laboring to destroy and ruin it, and ruin is at hand. The two enemies of the church who have lost their accomplice are firmly resolved to destroy the pious and learned men that stand in their way. October 4, 1820 When I saw the church of St. Peter in ruins and the manner in which so many of the clergy were themselves busy at this work of destruction, none of them wishing to do it openly in front of the others, I was in such distress that I cried out to Jesus with all my might, imploring his mercy. Then I saw before me the heavenly spouse, and he spoke to me for a long time. He said, among other things, that this transition of the church from one place to another meant that she would seem to be in complete decline, but she would rise again, even if there remained but one Catholic. The church would conquer again because she does not rest on human counsels and intelligence. It was shown to me that there were almost no Christians left in the old exception of the word. October 7, 1820 As I was going through Rome with St. Francis and the other saint, we saw a great palace engulfed in flames from top to bottom. I was very much afraid that the occupants would be burned to death because no one came forward to put out the fire. As we came nearer, however, the fire abated and we saw the blackened building. We went through a number of magnificent rooms untouched by the fire and we finally reached the Pope. He was sitting in the dark and slept in a large armchair. He was very ill and weak. He could no longer walk. The ecclesiastics in the inner circle looked insincere and lacking in zeal. I did not like them. I told the Pope of the bishops, and who are to be appointed soon, I told him also that he must not leave Rome. If he did so, it would be chaos. He thought that the evil was inevitable, and that he should leave in order to save many things beside himself. He was very much inclined to leave Rome, and he was insistently urged to do so. The Pope is still attached to the things of this earth in many ways. The church is completely isolated, and as if completely deserted, it seems that everyone is running away. Everywhere I see great misery, hatred, treason, confusion, and other utter blindness. O city, O city, what is threatening thee? The storm is coming. Do you be watchful. June 1st, 1821 Among the strangest things that I saw were long processions of bishops. Their thoughts and utterances were made known to me through images issuing from their mouths. Their faults toward religion were shown by external deformities. A few had only a body with a dark cloud of fog instead of a head. Others had only a head. Their bodies and hearts were like thick vapors. Some were lame. Others were paralytics. Others were asleep or staggering. I saw what I believed to be nearly all the bishops of the world, but only a small number were perfectly sound. I also saw the Holy Father, God-fearing and prayerful. Nothing left to be desired in his appearance, but he was weakened by old age and by much suffering. His head was lolling from side to side, and it dropped into his chest as if falling asleep. He often fainted and seemed to be dying, but when he was praying, he was often comforted by apparitions from heaven. Then his head was erect, but as soon as it dropped again onto his chest, I saw a great number of people looking quickly right and left, that is, in the direction of the world. Then I saw that everything pertaining to Protestantism was gradually gaining the upper hand, and the Catholic religion fell into complete decadence. Most priests were lured by the glittering but false knowledge of the young school teachers, and they all contributed to the work of destruction. In those days, faith will fall very low, and it will be preserved in some places only, in a few cottages and in a few families which God has protected from disaster and, and wars. 1820-1821 I also saw the various regions of the earth. My guide Jesus named Europe in point named Europe and pointing to a small and sandy region, he uttered these words, Here is Prussia, East Germany, the enemy. Then he showed me another place to the north, and he said, This is Moskva, 
the land of Moscow, bringing many evils. I see many excommunicate ecclesiastics who do not seem to be concerned about it, nor even aware of it. Yet they are excommunicated whenever they cooperated to enterprises, enter into associations, and embrace opinions on which an, an, an anthema has been cast. It can be seen, thereby, that God ratifies the decrees, orders, and interdictions issued by the head of the church, and that he keeps them in force, even though men show no concern for them, reject them, or laugh them to scorn. April 22, 1823 I saw that many pastors allowed themselves to be taken up with ideas that were dangerous to the church. They were building a great, strange, and extravagant church. Everyone was to be admitted in it in order to be united and have equal rights. Evangelicals, Catholic sects of every description, such was to be the new church, but God had other designs. I see that when the second coming of Christ approaches, a bad priest will do much harm to the church. When the time of the reign of the Antichrist is near, a false religion will appear, which will be opposed to the unity of God and his church. This will cause the greatest schism the world has ever known. The nearer the time of the end, the more the darkness of Satan will spread on earth. The greater will be the number of the children of corruption, and the number of the just will, just will correspondingly diminish. They built a large, singular, extravagant church, which was to embrace all creeds with equal rights, evangelicals, Catholics, and all the denominations, a true communion of the unholy with one shepherd and one flock. There was to be a pope, a salaried pope, without possessions. All was made ready, many things finished, but in place of an altar were only abomination and desolation. Such was the new church to be, and it was for it that he had set fire to the old one, but God designed otherwise. I came to the church of Peter and Paul, and I saw a dark world of distress, confusion, and corruption, through which shone countless graces from thousands of saints who there repose. I saw the fatal consequences of the counterfeit church. I saw increase. I saw heretics of all kinds flocking to the city. I saw the ever-increasing tepidity of the clergy, the circle of darkness ever widening. Again I saw in the midst of these disasters, the twelve new apostles laboring in different countries, unknown to one another, each receiving streams of living water from on high. They all did the same work. They know not whence they received their tasks, but as soon as one was finished, another was ready for them. The Jews shall return to Palestine and become Christians towards the end of the world. October 22, 1882, 1822 Very bad times will come when non-Catholics will lead many people astray. A great confusion will result. I saw the battle also. The enemies were far more numerous, but the small army of the faithful cut down whole rows of enemy soldiers. During the battle, the Blessed Virgin stood on a hill wearing a suit of armor. It was a terrible war. At the end, only a few fighters for the just cause survived, but the victory was theirs.